Well, good day to you and welcome back. Well, what I have today for you is I have a Smith Corona 5A series Sterling. This typewriter belongs to a local school and I've been working with their analog club. They have probably about 13 typewriters in various states of needing repair to some of them working pretty good. This one had a couple problems. One of the big problems was the letter S. The linkage was completely disconnected. It wouldn't even move the type bar. But they were also complaining about the space bar wouldn't work most of the time. And it turned out to be the linkage problem was actually pretty easy to fix. But the uh, space bar problem turned out to be serious issues with the escapement. And I had to completely remove the escapement from the typewriter and basically disassemble it and rebuild it. And that's what I want to show you today. So stay tuned. All right, so for the letter S, for the linkage being disconnected, you can see it right here. This forked piece is called the clevis, and you can stick a screwdriver in there and spread it apart, and you can fit it back over the linkage. There's a pin in one of the sides of this clevis here. You spread it apart, you fit it over this linkage, the pin pops in, and it goes back into place pretty easily. You may have to use a small, thin screwdriver along with like a spring hook tool or something to hold the other linkage in place while you're doing it. It was a pretty easy job. Now let's look at the escapement problem. Okay, so the escapement problem I've already fixed, so I'm showing you this after the fact, but that's the escapement in operation, that plate that rocks back and forth that has the two dog levers on it. So the big problem I noticed immediately upon looking at it was there is a rubber plate or a rubber gasket material. You can see one side of it here and the other side sticking out here. The original rubber was totally degraded. So this is the piece of rubber that I took out of the machine. This part over here that you can see is kind of torn. That is the problem. That piece is torn and it's causing the dog levers to move too far which causes them to actually jam up and not work properly. So I had to lay this rubber part out flat, trace its outline on a fresh thin sheet of rubber, cut it out and install it. I had to take the escapement off out of it completely, disassemble the escapement and I installed new rubber in this escapement. Now this rubber part is ostensibly called the return silencer, but in this case it's absolutely critical that you have this rubber in here, otherwise the escapement won't work at all. And we'll see that in a minute. So let's show you how to remove the escapement. Okay, so we're looking down on the escapement here. So to remove it, we're going to disconnect this spring. We're going to disconnect this end of it that attaches to the escapement. Secondly, we're going to disconnect this spring right here that attaches to the spacebar linkage. Then we're going to remove this shoulder screw and this shoulder screw. And then we're going to have three screws we remove. One is going to be here. One is next to it right here. And the third one is over on the other side right here. Once you have all that loose, this entire escaping mechanism will come out. You'll have to work it out underneath these brackets and around here, but it'll all come out in one piece. So I found using a pair of tweezers is kind of useful. So I'm going to be taking this screw out first right here. And I realize you can't see very well. Right here, set the screw aside. Right here, set the screw aside. Okay, that third screw is right here. Set it aside. Then we're going to remove the end of this spring right here. Pull it off the hole. Just let that spring sit there. We're going to remove this end of this spring. And oh, by the way, you should probably take a photo of all of this with your phone before you start this, just so you know how everything goes back together. This shoulder screw, we're going to hold it, try to hold it with our tweezers as we loosen it. set it aside. And this shoulder screw over here is a different size from the one we just took off, so make sure you don't get them confused. Okay, put that screw aside. 
All right, so now the whole trick is the escapement is all loose and I'm just trying to work it out so this bracket here comes up over these parts and this part here comes underneath this linkage here and comes out. And there's really no easy way to tell you how to do it. You just kind of have to fiddle with it. Hold your mouth just right. Every time I've done this, it's been a little different getting it out for some reason. Okay. All right, there it is. Let's set the typewriter aside and look at this part. Okay, so there are two dog levers. There's this one here, and there's this one here. And the ends of them, the back ends of them are both here. So you'll see this piece of rubber that I pointed out earlier. If I flip this over, there is this black bracket that's secured. There's a round end of it secured under this nut. And that black piece of rubber, it's now black. It was originally this kind of tan color. But that piece of rubber is kind of folded in a U-shape underneath this U-shaped black bracket. And then the wide end of the rubber sheet goes along this bracket here and the narrow end goes along the narrow end of this bracket here. Now the problem with performance of this machine was that the end of this rubber piece here was torn and what it was causing, it was causing the left edge of this bracket of this dog lever to move far enough left to touch this metal bracket and that caused the dog lever's tip right here to be too far to the left which caused this other dog lever to jam up against it and lock up the whole machine. So the way this is supposed to work is if I put some clockwise rotation force on the star wheel with my thumb then I rock this rocker plate and it will move one tooth and be caught by the one dog and then I rock it back. Let's try that again. Let's try that. You rock it forward and it's caught by the small dog lever behind it and then when it goes back it's caught by the front one. So it rocks, it's caught, and then it goes back. Like that. So how do you take this apart? Well, so you have a, a nut here and it secures this screw here for the small dog lever. So this is a shoulder screw, but the screw threads into the main plate of the escapement. And the nut secures or locks the screw into place. And so how you're supposed to adjust these is you tighten the screw all the way down. And when you do that, the lever will be completely tight. It won't be able to rotate. And then you back it off an eighth of a turn. And then holding it in place so the screw can't turn anymore, then you secure the nut down onto it. And that's a 3 16th inch wrench for that nut. And the idea is you're giving it just enough looseness to freely pivot but not enough looseness for it to wobble much at all in its plane of rotation. There should be hardly any wobble at all, but it should be able to free, freely rotate. Now this other screw on the other dog lever works similarly. You have the nut that secures it, and this nut is also holding this black bracket in place. But this nut has a shoulder protrusion along the this side of it. So don't get the two nuts mixed up. This is slightly thicker and has a shoulder on it. So you want to loosen this nut, unscrew the screw, completely take the screw out, take this black bracket out, and then you can replace the piece of rubber. And what I did to replace the rubber is I laid down the old piece of rubber flat on a sheet of new rubber that I had and I traced around it and cut it out with scissors. So when you put it back in, that new piece of rubber goes around the inside of this black U-shaped bracket, like that. As I said earlier, 
the wide end comes up on the left side, the narrow end comes on the right side. You screw the screw back into the bracket here, put the black bracket, the round loop of it over the screw hole, put your nut on, and then you're going to do the same thing with this screw. If you tighten it down all the way, the dog lever won't move. So what you want to do is you want to tighten it down completely and then back it off an eighth of a turn and then lock this nut down. But keeping in mind with this nut, it has a slight shoulder that has to fit into the hole of this black bracket. So to make sure it's properly centered so when you lock the nut down, it is properly centered in the hole of this black bracket. And this dog liver should be free to move like that. If I get, get it out of the way, it's free to move but there's no wobble, up and down wobble. Okay, so once you've done that and reassemble it, you're gonna just put it back together. Make sure you get this spring back in place that connects the two back ends of the dog levers. And also, I should mention, there is this protruding arm that hits the plate here. This arm sets the position of the dog lever, of this dog lever, relative to the teeth of the star wheel. So the teeth of the dog lever here should match the teeth of the star wheel. And if it doesn't, you can bend or reshape this arm so that the rocker plate is either higher up slightly or further down. And then the other extreme movement, so this is, that's the down movement of the rocker plate where it sits and the upward movement like that, that's determined by the shape of this arm, how it's bent, and how it engages the other parts of the typewriter. So those set the upper and lower limits of the rocking part of the rocker plate. Okay, so we're going to put this back in, but another thing I should point out to you right now is this lever. When you're working on the escapement, it needs to be where this part of it is in here. And because I've kind of twiddled with it at weird angles, it's kind of fallen out. And you want to make sure this goes back in the right position before you reinstall the escape, and otherwise you won't be able to get it back in when it's once it's in the machine. And it's kind of like that. It popped through. So now, if you see the wear patterns on this arm, it's supposed to be right here is the movement of that backspace lever. Okay, so just like that, it's going to go back in the machine. It's going to reverse what we did before. Okay, so now to get this back in, first of all, make sure the backspace lever stays here. I'm going to feed the backspace lever underneath this linkage. You want to get this part underneath this linkage. Like that. And then this part has to go underneath all this stuff. Like that. So now the bottom plate is sitting on this base and I line up the three holes and make sure that the screw hole on this part is to the right of this linkage and then the backspace lever will sit here and that screw will go there and then we'll reconnect our springs and probably it's a good time right now to actually reconnect the one spring so I'm going to try pushing the end of the spring over the lip of that bracket like that. And now the end of the spring is in the hole. So now we're going to try to get this screw on this side. And I'm going to not tighten it completely. I'm going to leave it about a half a turn loose. All right, having retrieved the screw that I dropped. Okay, once you start it, don't completely lock it down so you can give a chance for the other screw to seat properly. These are not very long screws so holding on to them is a trick. Okay, so make sure the plate is firmly seated here. I'm going to go ahead and lock the three screws down like that. Okay, the next thing is I'm going to try to get this fat head shoulder screw started and then as you screw it down make sure the linkage is free of the shoulder make sure the shoulder fits in the slot of the linkage or in the oval hole and now it's free to move like that and then we have 
this guy here. There we go. Okay. And then we need to take this spring here and hook it around this bracket here. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to lean the machine forward a bit and now it spaces fine. Looks like it works just fine. Well, I can't stress to you how dramatically different the typewriter acted after replacing that little piece of rubber and getting both of those dog levers tightened down properly so they can still freely move and not wobble. Once I did that and I reinstalled the escapement, the machine operated just perfectly. Whereas what it was doing before is once this piece of rubber started really wearing out is intermittently the entire escapement would lock up, the carriage would lock up because the points of the dog levers were caught on each other and on one of the points of the star wheel simultaneously. So um, I also had to do a little bit of adjustment to the yeah. lowercase position which is set here, uppercase is here, and it needs a lot of cleaning. Uh, this typewriter is very dirty. So I'm going to be doing that. Oh yeah, there was a little bit of uh, left margin banking. In other words, it was erratic. It would stop either one character too far to the left or too far to the right. And that was, uh, I'll have to show you that in a different video, but that's basically a bracket down here close to the escapement. And you can slide it left and right slightly and adjust the margin banking. So all of these adjustments I've done, they're all listed in this Smith Corona Typewriter Repair Bible, the Floating Shift Typewriter Repair Bible. This covers the 5 series and the previous series to that, the so-called 4 series. These are put together by Ted Monk and I'll leave a link down below if you're interested in getting one of these. Well, with some degreasing and cleaning, I hope this machine will be back together soon, back to uh, the analog club at the local school and hopefully they'll get some good use out of it. Well, if you have a typewriter collection of any size and you would like to see other people blessed with it, consider working with local schools and getting typewriters into the classroom. Kids love typewriters because for them it's a completely new thing. They've never seen them before. It's from a different era. And so with that, we end this video. And as always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.